So starting off our list today at number 10, we have Chris Rock makes more Will Smith jokes. In the last 10 minutes of his live Netflix special, Chris Rock went on to address the Oscar slap and honestly it has a lot of us scratching our heads because he waited over a year to say anything. And it just seems a little too calculated because I don't think he's done yet. As Chris spent much of his 70 minute set alluding to the slap before he went on a rant about how Will Smith practices selective outrage. He then went on to recap, well, his marital troubles with his wife Jada Pinkett Smith and in the years leading up before noting everyone called Smith a B for going public with his wife's cheating scandal. It's clear that Chris Rock is done taking the high route like he did in the beginning of the scandal and Chris being so open with the events now it just seems like he bottled up all of his anger about the incident and he's ready to explode just like Will Smith did at the last Oscars so we could see Chris make the wrong move at this Academy Awards show. Number 9 Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck After Ben Affleck Affleck and Jennifer Lopez were caught looking a little gloomy and out of place at the Grammys. It makes you wonder what the Oscars could have in store for the couple. Like, will Ben be attending the Oscars or will he be watching the show at home in his sweatpants? But honestly, anything is possible with this couple. What is for sure though is that Jennifer definitely doesn't want any more questions about her relationship with Ben and what it's like behind closed doors any longer. So we're definitely going to see the couple pack on the PDA if they actually decide to attend the ceremony this year. So they can convince the public that there's no trouble in paradise. And if Ben is caught looking a tad gloomy, we can expect Jennifer to be a little less than impressed with the fact we might just see her lose her cool and tell Ben again to look friendly and motivated before she storms off and leaves the show. Hey my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Number 8 Rihanna's Performance 2023 has definitely been a big year for Rihanna so far and the year has only just begun. Not only did Rihanna have the chance to put on a stunning Super Bowl halftime show where she announced her second pregnancy, but fresh off her Super Bowl halftime performance, the pregnant star will be singing her Oscar nominated song Lift Me Up from Marvel's Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Honestly, Rihanna is probably going to take home the Oscar during the awards ceremony and the world is wondering what her performance could be like at the Oscars and who it may upset this time around. With the FCC receiving more than 100 complaints about Rihanna's Super Bowl performance, many have labeled it not only as boring to watch but also too sexy for television. It really makes you wonder what this pop star could have up her sleeve for the show and if she's going to use her performance to give one giant F off to the people who didn't understand the concept of her Super Bowl show. What is for sure though is Rihanna is probably going to go all out for this performance and she's going to drive all her Super Bowl haters nuts in the process. Number 7 Tom Cruise calls out his snub Sometimes it's probably better not to gloat too hard or you might not go as far to the top as you thought. So remember how few months ago Tom Cruise was gloating that he was back on top while his rival in the acting industry was at the bottom of the charts. With Tom's film Top Gun Maverick being a success in the box office, it brought in over 1.3 billion dollars worldwide and it would make the film the second highest grossing film in 2022 and the highest grossing film of Tom Cruise's career. Even with the film getting best picture nomination and a bevy of nods in technical categories, the blockbuster Top Gun sequel was shut out in best director. It also also missed nomination for best cinematography, which it had widely been predicted to win. But most shockingly, Tom Cruise was also snubbed of a best actor nomination. If the film wins any type of award, on the night of the Oscars, which honestly for the categories it was nominated in is really slim, but if it does, we will see Tom Cruise take the stage and address his snub and other snubs the film faced. Number 6 Johnny Depp clashes with the director So back in December after Johnny finally returned to the acting scene, his name would hit the tabloids as media outlets all over the world started to state that the actor was going back to his old ways and how he should be behaving himself from getting such negative press reviews. In an article posted by Lifestyle, the media outlet would explain that since Johnny got back into what he loves doing the most, acting, his on set behavior has been pretty problematic. With reports stating that Johnny, while he was on the set of John DeBerry, he was extremely rude not only to the director of the film, Mywin Lebesco, but also to his co stars and crew. But it could have actually all been Mywin's fault, as apparently the two only clashed with each other because Mywin was a little petty. With reports stating that Johnny started falling back into his old habits after the director and him started screaming at each other. Inside sources would then reveal the whole problem started after Johnny was late for a set and Mywin freaked out at him and then the next day Johnny would be on time and the director wouldn't even show up. So if these two 
cross paths during the show, we're definitely going to see some tension and we're all going to see Johnny address the rumors once and for all while dragging Mywin's name through the mud. Number 5, Jimmy Kimmel's take things a little too far. Okay, so the Oscars hasn't even started and it already seems like Jimmy Kimmel is taking things a little too far as he started making comments about last year's events, especially the infamous slapping incident, and it makes you wonder what he's going to do for this year's show. With Jimmy outlining that if someone was to walk on stage and slap him this year, Jimmy would say he would size up the person before getting into a physical altercation with them on television, but if it was The Rock walking up on the stage, he would just run away. I mean, as a celebrity, you do have the power to address certain situations, but when they condone violence, it's probably better just to keep them in your head. Throughout the night, I'm sure we'll see Jimmy make many jokes about what happened at last year's ceremony, as he's probably already running through all the scenarios he could have fun with for the infamous incident during the event, especially since he's already labeling himself as an unflappable and unslappable host. We already know the night is going to be pushed into jokes that go a little too far, and they may upset a lot of people in the audience. Number 4. James Corden tells someone how to do their job. With James Corden already thinking he's on top of the world and that no one can damage his career, he's become pretty unpredictable over the last year as he's made some pretty poor choices that have resulted in him becoming one of the most hated celebrities in the world. It seems like the once humble comedian let the fame go a little too far to his head and now he just doesn't view people as you know human beings more as objects that were made to serve him and not make mistakes. But the comedian recently finding himself being banned from Keith McNally's restaurant, the world would be shocked when Keith took aim at James by calling him a tiny cretin of a man just after James was rude, demissive, and nasty to his restaurant staff. Keith also labeled the late night host as one of the most abusive customers his staff has ever had to serve. So James pretty much got angry when his wife's omelette wasn't made right and he told the server they couldn't do their job and that he should just go into the kitchen and cook the omelette himself. So with the way things could go, if someone just bumps into James or a seat filler takes his seat when he leaves for 5 seconds, James could just lose it again and tell someone how to do their job right. Number 3. Jamie Lynn Spears battles to save her career. So the word on the block is even after Jamie Lynn Spears was called out by her sister Britney Spears for making her life a living hell like the rest of her family did, somehow she got another acting job in Zoe 101 as it's coming back. So recently Paramount announced that they have officially started production on Zoe 102, which is a sequel film to Zoe 101, Nickelodeon's iconic series. So ahead of the film premiering, we know that Jamie Lynn is going to want to get as much press as she can, so she's going to make an appearance at a bunch of events and make maybe just the Oscars to get fans to stop talking about her ongoing drama with Britney and start talking about her new film, Zoe 102. However, making an Oscar appearance could damage the star's career even further as the world still isn't over the fact that she thought it was okay to talk about how hard her life was growing up in the shadow of her famous older sister or the fact that it was also released that she bullied one of her co-stars on Zoe 101 to the point she had the rest of the cast even shut this girl out. And now she's getting a reboot which just isn't okay. But but now it seems like she's just crying to jump on the Me Too movement so fans can forget about her poor behavior. But if she makes an appearance at the Oscars, it's just gonna prove that she never really learned how to grow up. Number two, Shia LaBeouf beefs with Olivia Wilde. Remember how Olivia Wilde said she had to fire Shia LaBeouf for feuding with Florence Pugh? And then we all learned from Shia that this just wasn't the case. Okay, so we all know that there's a lot of rumors surrounding the set of the film, Don't Worry Darling. And while at first Olivia Wilde tried to label Shia as the initial problem when it came to the set's feuds, Shia would then come out to prove that this just wasn't the case when he came out to say that he wasn't fired and he had to quit the film because Olivia had her actors on these crazy schedules so they didn't even have time to rehearse with Shy. But the drama between the two just got worse from there as Shy then started to share messages where Olivia was seen making fun of her leading lady, Florence Pugh. And with Olivia still trying to throw all the problems with the set at Shy, he's gone a little too quiet when it comes to the issue, which could be highlighting that he's waiting to run into the star in person to tell her how it really is. And it could be because he's waiting for a public event to show the world how Olivia really acts in person. And what event would be any more perfect? 
than the Oscars. And coming in at number one today, we have a Kanye West type moment. So the fact that Viola Davis was not nominated for Best Actress in a Leading Role has a lot of us kicking the air right now. And with it, we are definitely going to see a Kanye like moment like the time he stormed the stage when Taylor Swift won her award for Best Video by a Female Artist. And when he took the mic from her and told her, Taylor, I'm gonna let you finish, but Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. Well, I'm sorry for the poor actress who wins the Best Actress in a Leading Role award, but your moment is going to be cut short as someone's definitely going to storm the stage, take the mic, and tell you that you did a good job, which honestly you did, so give yourself a big pat on the back, but you didn't deserve to win Best Leading Actress as Viola Davis had an outstanding performance. And the fact that the Oscars snubbed her from achieving the title is a sin. So while you're making your speech, the first thing you should do is acknowledge her snub and her hard work, or expect someone to pull a Kanye and tell you how it really is. Coming in at number 10, we have Grimes and Elon Musk. In March, during a truly bizarre series of events, Grimes would be forced to reveal while she was being interviewed for a Vanity Fair cover story that she and Elon Musk had welcomed a second child. Now, if you're wondering how this could have possibly happened, don't worry, I'll catch you up on all the tea. So while the writer of the article, Devin Gordon, was interviewing Grimes at her home, they would be interrupted by the unmistakable sound of a crying baby upstairs. Being caught on surprise, Grimes would initially say she wasn't at liberty to speak of these things, but she eventually came clean and would reveal the cries belong to Elon's and her new baby daughter, named Exa Dark Sidriel, who they gave the nickname of Y2. But it was kind of strange that they decided to keep their daughter a secret since when Grimes was first pregnant with their first child, it made headlines everywhere. Now, understandably, the writer would then proceed to ask why they attempted to conceal the baby from the world, to which Grimes would candidly admit, I don't know, I don't know what I was thinking. And moral of the story is, if you're trying to hide a newborn, maybe you shouldn't do interviews after. Home. Number nine, Lady Gaga. After receiving a critical acclaim for her lead performance in A Star Is Born, fans were primed and ready to go for Gaga to tell us some more pearls of wisdom. She was set to promote House of Gucci in late 2021, and she honestly did not disappoint. In the movie, which is based on the real life story of the Gucci family, Gaga would star as Patricia Rajane, and she honestly set expectations high ahead of its release by revealing that she was left with psychological difficulty and had to enlist help from a psychiatric nurse towards the end of shooting because she lived as Patrizia for more than a year. In January, Gaga would then manage to one-up herself by telling a story how she eventually departed from the character by explaining to W Magazine that she began to be followed by a large swarm of flies, which she believed were sent by Patricia herself. Gaga would then go on to say, I truly began to believe that she had sent them. I was ready to let go while Patricia is very much still alive and has made it clear that she is not Gaga's biggest fan. It still remains unclear whether the flies were sent under her instruction. And if they were, that's some next level, dark level of petty. And why would she choose flies out of all things? Hey, my little peaches, are you liking this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Number eight, Will Smith and Chris Rock. While you may not have forgotten this particular incident between Chris Rock and Will Smith, it's still Still remains one of the most shocking celebrity moments of all time. At the Oscar Awards show back in March, Chris Rock would make a tasteless joke about Jada Pinkett Smith's bald head while presenting an award. Jada, who has openly struggled with hair loss and alopecia, definitely wasn't impressed, and her husband, Will Smith, was definitely not happy about the quip either. Seconds after the words even left Chris's mouth, Will would rise from his chair alongside Jada in the front row, and he would proceed to smack Chris across the face. Audience members and those viewing the show at home were left feeling confused about what had actually happened and whether the incident was staged or not. However, when Will won the award for Best Actor, moments later, he would give a teary speech about protecting his family and it would become abundantly clear that this was for real. A few days later, Will would even issue an apology and it was ultimately decided by the Academy that he would be banned from the ceremony for the next 10 years. However, his remorse wasn't quite enough to silence his celebrity peers. It's not entirely clear whether or not Chris and Will have made up yet, but it's actually time people refrain from giving any more opinions into the matter. Number seven, Kim Kardashian. Now it's clear that the Kardashian and Jenner family are no strangers to photoshopping scandals, but 
Last year, Kim seriously raised some eyebrows after she posted some photos of her and Khloe Kardashian's daughter, Chicago and True, at Disneyland. After the photo was posted, it became immediately apparent to fans that something wasn't quite right. And it didn't take long for people to work out that the pictures Kim posted actually matched up with a family Disney trip that True hadn't attended. And so it was quickly speculated that for some reason, Kim had photoshopped True's head onto the body of Kylie Jenner's four-year-old daughter, Stormy. Eventually, after four months of rampant speculation, Kim would finally confirm that the theories were correct and she would reveal that the Photoshop blunder came about as a result of her wanting to maintain her current Instagram aesthetic, which involved pink and blue hues. Apparently, Chicago's pink coat matched the theme and Kylie didn't want any pictures of her daughter shared at the time as it was only a month after the Astroworld tragedy. And Kim respected her sister's wishes and decided to take matters into her own hands as she proceeded to replace Stormy's face with Trues. Much to Kim's delight, even Chloe had apparently been fooled by the magic editing, but none of us were. So better luck next time, Kimberly. Number six, Chris Pratt. Some celebrities are known for making some pretty big diva demands, but Chris Pratt has only one request and it's to not call him Chris under any circumstances, all right. It might not be that serious, but why the Guardians of the Galaxy star dropped the bombshell that no one calls him by his actual name, and he likes it that way during an interview with Sirius XM's Pop Culture Spotlight in June, the actor clarified that his buddies refer to him as CP or sometimes just Pratt, but never Chris. And he even revealed that even those who try to call him Chris are soon corrected. Chris would say, I went golfing with my friend Chad, my pastor the other day. And he was like, no one calls you Chris. I'm going to call you Chris. All right, Chris, you're up. And I was like, no, it feels weird. It's not my name. Don't call me Chris. Of course, it's not unusual that celebrities professionally go by names that actually aren't what they're called. However, Chris has been a Chris since birth, which only makes the whole thing more confusing. And I still need an explanation on why he's so against using his own name. Number five, Army Hammer. When we're recapping true WTF moments of 2022, it doesn't get much more confusing than the rumors that Army Hammer had started working at a hotel in Cayman Islands after being away from the public eye for nearly two years after being faced with a number of disturbing accusations, which he continues to deny. People quickly latched onto this viral theory that the actor had sought employment elsewhere, and the rumors stem from an intriguing flyer that made rounds online in July. With the flyer being branded with the logo of a hotel, it also included a photograph of Army and advertised him as a personal contact. Sierra. After one Twitter user claims that her parents had been served by Army on their vacation, the idea that he might actually be working for the hotel felt quite possible, particularly given that he is known to spend a lot of time in Cayman Islands. However, his lawyer was eventually forced to debunk the rumor by telling Variety that the flyer had been a prank among employees at the hotel in question. But the story didn't end there, as a few days later, TMZ would then publish photos of Army appearing to be dressed in a uniform working at the resort and Soon after, Variety updated their story and claimed instead that Army actually was working at the hotel. Number four, Kendall Jenner. Kendall Jenner landed herself at the center of a viral mockery in May after she showed off some questionable culinary skills. During a scene of the family's reality show, The Kardashians, she was seen preparing herself a healthy snack at Kris Jenner's house. Standing at her vast kitchen island, Kris watched her in confusion as her daughter attempted to slice a cucumber in a truly bizarre fashion. With it being possible, I I think we were actually watching her cut the cucumber backwards as she had one hand crossed over the other and Chris would then quickly suggest that her personal chef might be able to take over, but Kendall was adamant about getting the job done herself. She then told the Bemuse crew that she wasn't a good cutter and she didn't want them to zoom in on her because she wasn't a professional in the kitchen whatsoever. The technique was so strange that some fans even started to theorize that the only possible explanation was that Kendall had staged it on purpose. However, if this was the case, she perhaps didn't achieve her desired outcome as fans kept branding her attempts at cutting the cucumber to be embarrassing and tragic. Despite the backlash, Kendall ended up getting the last laugh a few months later after taking the name Cucumber Girl quite literally by dressing as a cucumber for Instagram. Number three, Pete Davidson 
Harden and Kanye West. 2022 was undeniably Pete Davidson's year as he started off high as the boyfriend to Kim Kardashian and ended the year by being linked to Emily Ratajkowski. But Pete's year wasn't without the fair share of difficulties as he and Kim became embroiled in a public feud with her ex-husband Kanye West. While Kim and Pete were initially praised for maintaining a dignified silence as Ye's harassment of them became more persistent, the few came to head in March when Pete, who doesn't have social media, shared a batch of text messages between him and Kanye. The conversations, which were posted by his friend's Instagram account following weeks of resentless aggravation, would show Pete defending Kim and offering to meet Kanye to discuss their issues privately. Pete would say, I've decided I'm not going to let you treat us this way anymore and I'm done being quiet. Grow the F up. Kanye definitely wasn't pleased with the message and he replied by asking Pete where he was prompting the comedian to respond with a shirtless selfie with the caption in bed with your wife. I don't think anyone had Pete Davidson telling Kanye to grow up over text in their 2022 bingo card, but then again, here we are. Number two, Brooklyn Beckham. This year, Brooklyn Beckham got married, found himself in the middle of a feud between his mother and his wife, sparked amusement by using an experimental gin and tonic recipe, and called himself a professional chef. The awkward moment came about when he was featured in Daniel Mack's popular What Do You Do For A Living TikTok series. And the now viral video, Brooklyn was pictured behind the wheel of a $1.2 million McLaren P1 and he was asked about what he did for work in order to afford such a car, which then prompt him to say that he was a chef. Of course, the implication was that Brooklyn is the child of the two world's most famous people and a son-in-law of a billionaire, and he managed to get his hands on a sports car thanks to his work as a professional chef, which FYI is currently limited to a number of poorly received television appearances and YouTube videos. Since he's overlooked, the actual reason he's driving a million dollars car at the age of 23. People weren't happy with Brooklyn and he soon became the subject of intense mockery. However, he seemed to take the backlash in stride, saying in an Instagram live video that he was still learning when it came to his cooking. And coming in number one today, we have Harry Styles. After a month of swirling drama about Don't Worry Darling and its stars, the world watched with bated breath as the entire cast came together at the Venice Film Festival in September. And while body language experts and fans alike had their sights fixed firmly on the reported feud between Olivia and Florence. It was an entirely different case for whose behavior got the world talking. It all started after a viral video taken from inside the screening theater showed Harry Styles approaching his seat as the audience applauded his entrance. Seated next to him, Chris Pine was also clapping along for the single. But in the very same moment that Harry bent down to take his seat, he erupted,ly stopped and stared into his lap with a bemused smirk. The timing of Chris's unusual gesture would spark the theory that Harry had spat onto him. And honestly, if you watch the video a thousand times over, it's not hard to understand how people came to the conclusion. The spit gate consumed almost every inch of the internet for about 18 hours before Chris's team was forced to issue a strong worded statement refuting the ridiculous claims. A few days later, Harry also made light of the online frenzy while on stage at Madison Square Gardens telling his fans he was glad to be back in the city after a quick trip to Venice to spit on Chris Pine. At number 10, we have jumping on Oprah's sofa. So when Tom Cruise was caught jumping on Oprah's sofa, it had to be one of the most arrogant incidents to ever happen in Hollywood. In 2005, in his interview with Oprah, the episode would become one of the most bizarre public displays of affection we have ever seen. Now, Tom would only appear on the show to promote his role in the film, War of the Worlds. However, people would quickly forget about the film entirely after he went on to declare his love for Katie Holmes. Tom would then be seen acting manically as he began to jump up and down on Oprah's furniture while screaming, I'm in love, I'm in love. It's one of these things where you want to be cool, like yeah, yeah I like her, that's how I feel. However, while the star wanted to look cool, he definitely didn't in this situation. And number nine, stunt gone wrong. So in the acting world, Tom is well known for performing his own stunts and some of his stunts he's performed, not even a stunt devil would do the same thing. With the Mission Impossible franchise, providing a wealth of opportunities for him to indulge in his inner daredevil, like the moment he clung to the outside of a plane when it took off, the film definitely took a toll on him because not only was he launched into the air tied to the outside of an airplane, however, he also had to scale the world's tallest building. 
However, in the sixth Mission Impossible series, Tom would actually end up performing a stunt after insisting he could do it, and he ended up breaking his ankle in the process. When the actor was meant to hit the side of the wall and pull himself up and over the edge, he made the mistake of hitting the wall with his foot, and he knew instantly his ankle was broken. If Tom didn't let his arrogance get the best of him, this whole situation could have been avoided if he just let the stunt devil do his job. Hey Peaches, are you enjoying this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And number eight, Scientology video. Tom Cruise is a member of the Church of Scientology and this has been a well-known fact known by the public for years. Although his involvement with the church has been pretty controversial over the last couple of years, many of us are surprised when the church released a promotional video onto the internet back in 2008 and it featured Tom Cruise. The nine minute video would show Tom discussing his beliefs while the theme of his Mission Impossible films played in the background. The video format appeared to be an interview with Cruise and it was edited so viewers couldn't hear the questions being asked, and some of Cruz's responses even ended up abruptly. His strange, intense, and strong delivery as he discussed the benefits of Scientology left us all appropriately bewildered. It was just such an arrogant moment because it's never right to preach about any type of religion anywhere, and while the star can study and believe what he wants to believe, he definitely should have known better. And number seven, the Matt Lauer interview. Another one of Tom Cruise's most arrogant moments caught on camera when he clashed with Matt Lauer on the Today Show and the whole interview got pretty heated. In June of 2020, Brooke Shields would lash out, out in 2020, Brooke Shields would lash out at Cruz, who on Access Hollywood called her irresponsible for using medication to help her combat her battle with depression. Tom would sit down with Matt and he became pretty defensive. Matt then took a few moments to devote the interview to the film before diving into Tom's relationship with Katie, Scientology, and ultimately then brought up the Brooke Shields dust up. Cruz would then go on to call Matt a glib and would go on to a rant to defend Scientology and their anti psychiatry stance. After the interview, Tom would also later admit that his conduct in the interview came across as arrogant because honestly, it pretty much did. And number six, the water prank. Though Tom Cruise has been given a few outrageous interviews, he probably can be excused for being a little peeved with Channel 4 during a red carpet encounter that happened in 2005 after the interviewer decided to play a prank on the actor by spraying Tom in the face with a small jet of water. Tom would then be furious and go on to say, that's incredibly rude. I'm here giving you an interview. Tom would then continue to go on and would call the interviewer a jerk. Later, a clip of the interview would then begin to circulate online and fans were quick to call out Tom's arrogance. After it was reported, he got police involved over the harmless incident. Channel 4 would then come out to issue an apology to Tom over the stunt. Channel 4 would come out to say, the stunt was intended to be lighthearted rather than malicious and we would like to apologize to Mr. Cruz for any offense that was caused. Number five, we have restricted oxygen. During an appearance on the late night show with David Letterman in 1999, Tom Cruise would recall the moment where he restricted oxygen for a passenger when flying to Colorado. According to Tom, he and his co-pilot, as well as a passenger, were using oxygen masks because they were flying at high altitudes. However, Tom realized that he didn't have enough oxygen to stay alert at that altitude. Him and the pilot decided to turn off the oxygen mask for the passenger so they could continue on their journey. As he continued to tell the story, he would say that the passenger passed out due to a lack of oxygen and he found the situation pretty hilarious. The whole situation was pretty much arrogant because Tom and his co-pilot had the opportunity to go down to a lower altitude to continue their journey instead of disregarding the passenger's safety, just decided to care about his own well-being, which just isn't okay. And number four, Brooke Shields feud. In 2005, Tom would criticize Brooke Shields for using medication. The whole situation would cause a major rift between the two stars. Cruz would go on to tell Access Hollywood that Brooke was irresponsible for saying in her memoir, Down Came the Rain, that she used medications to help cure her of her postpartum depression following the birth of her daughter Rowan in 2003. Brooke then would respond to Tom by saying he should stick to saving the world from aliens. Tom would later be asked about his views in another interview on the Today Show and he got into a pretty heated argument with the interviewer. Tom would go on to say that there's no such thing as chemical imbalance and insisted that vitamins and exercise were a better way to cure depression before going on to call the host a glib. 
Brooke would then go on to say that Cruz's comments were a disservice to mothers everywhere. Tom would then go over to Brooke's house to later apologize, and they seemed to recover their friendship as Brooke would attend his wedding in 2006. And number three, 60 Minute Australia interview. In 2005, Tom was interviewed by 60 Minute Australia to talk about his Scientology beliefs and Hollywood stardom. During his interview with the journalist, Peter Overton, he would be asked a series of questions about Nicole Kidman. Eventually, Tom would feel like the questions have gone too far, in which he prompted to say, you're overstepping your line now, you're overstepping the line, and you know you are. When Peter was asking questions the public wanted to know, Tom would then respond by saying, take responsibility for what you want to know, don't say what other people say. This is a conversation I'm having with you, right? Tom then continued to say, I'm just telling you right now, just put your manners back in. And number two, rant on set. I think we all had enough with the situation we were all put in following 2019. However, Tom really came across arrogant following a dispute he had with film crew staff that chose not to follow the rules. When an audio recording started to circulate on the internet, Tom furiously berated the crew of the Mission Impossible 7 set for failing to follow the rules, and we would all be left feeling shook when the actor went on to say, if I see you do it again, you're effing done. We are the gold standard, they're back in Hollywood making films right now because of us, because they believe in us and what we're doing. We're creating thousands of jobs, I don't want to ever see it again, ever. Fans then would become pretty divided over the outburst, as Tom went about the issue in such an aggressive tone and the use of language didn't sit well with any of us. While some agreed with his points claiming that he was taking a stand for health and safety, there was definitely a better way of dealing with the situation. Number 1. Hysterical antidote. Now, no one knows if this situation was less awkward or confrontational or simply just confusing. Tom made an appearance on David Letterman's late night show in the mid 90s. It would show the actor laughing for several minutes straight. The whole situation would start when Tom was trying to relate to Antidote about his latest movie. Tom began to crack up near the beginning of the interview and couldn't seem to stop laughing for the whole duration. Luckily for him, everyone around him also said it was funny, including David Letterman, who would also soon join his peers in laughter. However, the unexplained fit of near hysteria endures one of Cruz's most arrogant moments. And number 10, Cinderella. When the new Cinderella movie starring Camila Cabello dropped, not even a fairy godmother could make the bad reviews disappear. While the movie was good, the cast could have done better if the script had been better. Cinderella is a great role model to younger girls. However, the essence of the classic Cinderella character was definitely missing in Camila's character. From the bad lip syncing, terrible dialogue, and the fact that Camila wasn't good at carrying the film, what really bugged viewers is when Camila used feminism and empowerment for nothing more than marketing the movie. Her take on the girl boss Cinderella was not only boring, but it failed to show Cinderella was a boss of any kind, with her performance falling extremely flat, and her dialogue often coming across pretty cringeworthy, it became a film that many of us just wanted to forget. Now, there have been some great Cinderella adaptions over the years, and this one was definitely not one of them because all the film did was make us all cringe. And number nine, the kissing tour. When Shawn Mendes and Camila Cabello were together, they would share with the world a number of cringeworthy kisses. One of the videos would even do rounds on Twitter when Shawn would give everyone an intro into the clip by saying, We just want to show you all how we really kiss. And trust me, it was definitely a cringeworthy moment for both of the stars as they would share a really disturbing kiss. Fans would then hit to Twitter to say the way the two were kissing made it look weird on the video and that the pair oddly looked like a pair of fishes kissing. While it would go on to hurt the star's feelings, some have suggested that it looked like Sean didn't even particularly enjoy the kiss as it looked like Camila was kissing like a dog. Though the clip was pretty comical, the clip has drawn in an avalanche of too much information chance and the claims that this video was definitely one giant cringy way of playing their relationship and that's probably why their relationship never lasted. Hey Peaches, are you enjoying this video so far? If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And number 8, When She Fell On Stage. 
Camila Cabello had one of the hardest cringeworthy falls to ever exist while performing on stage for her concert back in 2019. The singer then took to Instagram to update fans on what really happened as apparently no phones were allowed in the venue to take videos. Camila went on to say, the rumors are true, I fell on my effing ass tonight. The rumors are true, I fell tonight, like actually I think it was the hardest fall I've ever had. I was about 6 foot, 7 foot fall, but I didn't feel it because the adrenaline was so high. She then would continue to thank her fans for asking if she was okay and that she found the whole situation really funny. Camila would then actually be more annoyed no cameras were allowed into the venue because the fall would have been a total meme worthy moment, but it actually just became more cringy after she winked at the camera and said it was recorded on camera somewhere. And number 7, when she split her pants. When you're a performer, you're bound to run into some problems on stage every once in a while from slipping to wardrobe malfunctions. No artist is ever safe, especially when it involves ripping your pants. That's exactly what happened to Camila Cabello back in 2017 when the singer was on stage for her Z100 Jingle Ball concert in New York. Her black bedazzled pants would totally betray her and rip near her inner thigh. Luckily, the situation wasn't too bad, so she could continue her performance and she would even laugh about the fact later by saying, me trying to look cool trying to cover up the fact that my pants just ripped mid squat at the Madison Square Garden. Now this situation wouldn't have been so cringy if the star just opted to wear jeans that fit her in the first place. And number 6, when she turned the airport into a fashion runway. One of the most cringiest things Camila has ever done is when she decided to turn the airport security into a runway. Don't get me wrong, I'm really into the idea of striking poses in random places is just for some good laughs. However, when you do it on two separate occasions at the airport security, it becomes a little cringy. When the incident first happened, Camila iconically decided to vogue in front of photographers who were snapping at her at the airport. And at first it was cute, but I mean, if the paparazzi is going to follow you around, you should have some fun with it. However, after the incident occurred a second time, it just became really cringy when the paparazzi decided to follow Camila. She decided to give them a little fashion show while showing them some poses with her mom and let's just say LAX should never host fashion week and this is a moment to be a reason why they shouldn't. And number 5, Chubby Bunny Challenge. So the Chubby Bunny is a popular fun game that's usually played by campers around the campfire. Players one by one will increase the number of marshmallows in their mouths in an attempt to clearly say the phrase Chubby Bunny and the winner is the person who can say the phrase with the most marshmallows in their mouth. However, when Camila decided to play the game on camera, it just became a huge cringy moment. What started off as an interview to promote her two new songs quickly turned into all fun and games when the singer decided to open a bag of marshmallows and ask the host, Andre D. Thompson, if he remembered the Chubby Bunny Challenge. The singer then quickly shoved four marshmallows in her mouth. After she couldn't fit in anymore, she would continue to try to talk with her mouth full of marshmallows, and then she even spit some out on the table. And Number 4, Steamy VMAs Duet When Shawn Mendes and Camila performed their chart topping duet, Senorita, at the VMAs, the couple was trying a little too hard to be steamy and it came off a little too cringy. Camila would kick things off in a sheer white long gown singing the song's opening as she walked on the stage with romantic lights. She then got close to Shawn before draping her arms over his biceps. The duo then proceeded to tease the crowd with several kisses before rubbing their noses together. However, the way Camila was all over Sean was pretty cringy and it was just a start of moments that would be shared with us that made us all go why is this even happening? And number three, missing her cue. It was definitely honestly embarrassing to watch Camila miss her cue during a live performance. When the singer decided to talk to the audience, she would notice that she missed a music cue. The star got so distracted that she even went on to tell the crowd, oh, I missed my cue. She would then proceed to fumble her way through the beginning of the song in an attempt to find her way back to where she was supposed to be and it definitely just wasn't a good look. However, a fan would then catch the whole thing on video and would share it to the internet. Now stars practice hours and hours a day to perfect their live performances, so missing a cue does happen from time to time, however it always seems to happen to Camila. The star is always so busy being distracted, it comes off like she's trying to act a little too quirky 
to her fans and she fails to realize what may seem cute to her is actually just a little too cringy for the rest of us. And number two, she knocked over her mic. When Camila was performing with Fifth Harmony to their song, Wango Tango, Camila would end up knocking over her mic. If you ever watch Fifth Harmony's performances, then you know that the ladies always seem to be in sync. However, as perfect as the group may seem, every now and then something would fall out of line at the performance due to Camila. When the group was performing Wango Tango, Camila decided to give a little too much enthusiasm to one of the particular dance moves mid swing. She knocked over her microphone stand just as it was her turn in the song to sing. She would then quickly bend down, grab the mic to bring it up go back information, and then she said smooth before jumping back into the song after realizing where the cue was at. The group definitely seemed really unimpressed with that one, and the rest of us were left going, did that actually just happen? And at number one today, we have the rejected high fives. When Camila finally made the decision to announce her departure from the female group Fifth Harmony, a lot of us wondered, why would she even want to leave? While a lot of people have presumed maybe it's simply because Camila kept getting left hanging when she tried to high five the group members. To add more heat to the rumors, when the group sat down for an interview, the interviewer totally missed Camila's high five attempts repeatedly over and over again. There was also a moment in the interview where her fellow bandmates ignored all of her high fives. Camila has been left hanging so many times, and all of the times have actually been caught on camera. You'd think after so many attempts, the star would have realized that no one wanted to high five her, and she should have just stopped and found something else to do except she continued to try to receive high fives for validations and it was just a little too cringy.